This is episode 11 of Very Spatial TV, Web Mapping APIs, Part 1. My name is Sue, and in this episode, I'm going to take a quick look at creating your own web mapping application from the perspective of a web mapping neophyte, which of course is me. First off, there are a couple of things you'll need to create your own web mapping application. First of all, web space. Okay? If you're doing this at home, you may already have web space from your ISP or even have your own website up and running. You can add your web mapping application to an existing web page or add one to your web folder. If you're doing this from work or school, you will need to get access to a web published folder from your sysadmin if you don't already have access. Keep in mind that the web mapping APIs I'm going to look at, Google Maps in this episode and Virtual Earth in the next episode, do have terms of use. So make sure you read them if you're making an application that might relate to your work. Okay, you will also need a computer, of course, and a text editor or web development progr program if you prefer. You can use Notepad or WordPad at the very least. I am trying out a beta application right now from Microsoft called Expression, which I personally like because the interface is similar to Visual Studio, which I use a fair bit when I program. Okay, now we're ready to go. I'm going to show you how to get started with both Google Maps and Virtual Earth, as I mentioned, um, although there are other APIs out there like Yahoo Maps and Map24. These development tools, however, don't really seem to me to be for the beginner. So Yahoo Maps and Map24 may be for those of you who are a little more advanced. Okay, so in this episode, we'll start with Google Maps. In order to include Google Maps on your web page, you'll need to get a Google Maps API key for your site. Head over to http.www.google.com slash APIs slash maps and sign up. Each URL that you want to embed a Google Maps viewer in will require its own API key, which is basically like a mini license. Okay, now open up your text or HTML editor. We're going to use the Google Maps API documentation to get us started. Open up a web browser and head to www.google.com slash APIs slash maps slash documentation. Okay, take a look at the introduction, the Hello World of Google Maps example, which will show you how to get a simple Google Maps viewer web page up and running. Copy and paste this code into your text editor. If you're using a web design program like Expression or adding your Google Maps to an existing web page, the HTML header and body code might already be there, and you just need to copy and paste the relevant code for the map control. The only thing you need to do now is replace the key equals portion of line 7 with your own Google Maps API key reference, and you're good to go. Now, save the page as HTML with your own URL, something like mywebpage.com slash googlemaps.html, and open the page in a web browser to check your handiwork. In order to learn better what the code is actually doing, read the documentation. It's a nice explanation of what's going on. If you're totally new to web programming and development, there are lots of tutorials on HTML, JavaScript, XML, Ajax, and all the other goodies that can go into the soup of a Google Maps application. All right, your first Google Maps application. Now, as our final step in this intro, we're going to add two types of functionality to the map. We're going to add controls to the map and a pushpin location that will show up when we open the web page. Okay, scroll down to the adding controls to the map heading in the documentation, which gives you a code sample for adding pan zoom and switching between map and satellite modes. Click on View Example, and you'll see a typical Google Maps control. If you want to see how the code was implemented, go to View in your browser and click on Page Source. For those of you who have never done web development, this lets you see the source code for any web page. In this case, you can see where the Add Control methods go in the JavaScript function. Copy and paste the two Add Control lines to your web page code and try it out. Finally, the last thing for today is to add a predefined push pin or marker to our Google Maps application. Markers are considered overlays as they are placed on top of the base Google Maps data. Scroll down to the documentation to the map overlays heading and take a look at the sample code. This sample adds 10 random points to our Google Maps. Okay, paste the code into your function below your add control methods and try it out. Hopefully you were able to get your Google Maps application up and running. In part two of this series, I'm going to take a look at Virtual Earth and show you how to use Microsoft's Virtual Earth in Interactive SDK to create your first Virtual Earth application. So, bye for now.